And here we go. Welcome everybody to the Minnesota Gophers Dynasty Season 3 off-season live stream. How is everybody doing? The time has finally come for us to make the transition as the screen will go black here for a moment as I am capturing. But here we go. It is time for the off-season, guys. We've been looking forward to this for a while. We had a, a rough end to the season. It was a good season overall. And you guys can see the results of our first three seasons in this dynasty. Went 6-7, six 6-7, and 8-6. Seven, six and seven, and six, But all those seasons ended with bowl losses. You can see the career record for Harry Kane Sr. 20-20, 0-3 20, in bowls, 7-6 and six in the top 25, and 6-5 six and five against our rivals. Now in 2016, what awaits us in Season 4? Welcome back, everybody. And everybody likes the haircut. If you didn't watch Skyrim last night, then this is your first time seeing the haircut, yes. Um, I always buzz my hair, quarter inch all the way around. But, I streamed Skyrim last night, so a handful of people have gotten to see me with the haircut. But, welcome guys, as this thing fills up, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to rock and roll. We're going to have some fun tonight. Off season. Love this. Can you should make a new intro on your main channel. It's a bit outdated. That I've thought about that, and I think I'm going to. Um, you can see today I got some new graphics on both channels. Banners, avatars, good stuff. But we are ready to go here, guys. How many people do we have in here so far? It's telling me 222. We'll see if that jumps. But streaming Minnesota Dynasty offseason now. Here we go. If only Kane was on time. Come on now. Come on now. I don't have any notes for tonight, but I'm going to be writing some stuff down. I'm just kind of buying some time now for people to get in the stream, and then we're going to be good to go. Congrats on hitting 70,000 subscribers. Thank you very much. I hit 70,000 earlier today. So, this is kind of my whole celebration. Hit saying eight people. Eight people. As long as I'm not dropping frames, I'm not too worried. Um, I think we're good to go. I'm not going to worry about that number. But anyway, who's ready for the offseason? We'll recap season three, and then we'll head into the offseason recruiting, signing day, finalizing the roster, the depth chart, red shirting, custom conferences, custom schedules, preseason recruiting. The good stuff. Here we go. Ah, oh, I've been waiting for this for a while. Anyway, we're going to finish this off by showing you guys some season stats and career stats. And it only shows the stats for players in the series because it doesn't show anything from, like, actual college football. But, anyway, you can see on the season, our quarterback, he's received some criticism in this series. He finished with almost 3,000 passing yards. He has the Minnesota single season record now for yardage. 24 touchdowns, excuse me, 13 interceptions, 67% completion percentage, and he was sacked 33 times. Nelson, I think, had an overall good season. It wasn't bad, and we won eight games. Running, Roderick Williams, 1,000 yards on the year, seven touchdowns. But how about Kevin Martindale, coming off with only 76 carries in his first season 554 yards, 4 touchdowns, averaging 7.2 yards a carry. That is impressive. Hartman, our fullback, got a number of carries as well. Average actually about 2 a game almost. And he ended up with 2 touchdowns. Berkeley Edwards had a few snaps, not too many. And you can see on down the list, a few more for other players. Calvin Pope's another halfback who only got 1 carry, obviously lost a yard. Receiving-wise, K.J. May blew it up this year. He came into the slot receiver. Spot, and he got 55 catches, 675 yards, three scores. And Kirkpatrick, our tight end, he was starting since week two, and he had pretty decent numbers, not big yardage, but he came through on third down many times and had 41 grabs. Andre McDonald had a great end of the year, 700-plus yards and four scores. And you can see on down the list, well, Atarski, good season as our number one receiver, going from number four to one in just a matter of a year. David Clark, true freshman, 20 grabs, two touchdowns. Doug Duckett, I had higher expectations, but he was only a freshman. 
redshirt freshman, and he'll have plenty of time to improve. Drops were his main issue, so he's got to get the hands better. He actually led the team in drops. They have the stat here. Doug Duckett had eight drops, and that caused him to be demoted to, like, six receiver. They actually got K.J. May into the role. Blocking, you can see you gave up the most sacks. And defense, we're going to move on very quickly. Andre Gaines, whom I don't think had a very good... Oh. Look who had a tackle, guys. He had one. I don't remember when it was, but it happened. It had to have been on a kickoff or something. But Leon Daniels had a tackle. Did they have anything else? Absolutely not. But you can see the numbers on the season. Jack Lynn, excellent year. Devondre Campbell, another very impressive season. Travis played well. Secondary didn't play overall that great as a unit. But how about Theron Cochran posting 16 sacks in his senior season? Peppers gets five, Manning gets four, Lynn gets three, Campbell gets three, and a few more on down the list. And all the Leon Daniels comments. You guys are out of control. I wanted to write down some stats, though, for reference next year. Actually, I could write these down later because I'm capturing right now. So I'm not going to write down how many passing touchdowns Nelson had and whatnot. But what I want to focus on more in Season 4 definitely is turnovers. And if we're not going to be a great defense, we got to continue to play risky. And we got to somehow find ways to cause turnovers. And interceptions, 4, 7, 9, 10, 11. We played 14 games and we recovered... Oops, wrong category here. We recovered one fumble. So we're not even averaging one turnover a game. We had uh, 12 in 14 games, and I want at least 20 next year. I want 20 turnovers. Oops. One second here. It's catching up. We don't need any freezing now. We had that last off-season stream. Uh, forced fumbles. Ray Dixon had two. Manning had one. Nobody graduating had one. That's good. Actually, it's not really good, but it's good for the future. Santoso, perfect, because it's a game and <laughs> kicking field goals is too easy. Uh, Matt Morris, decent year punting, I thought. Only seven in the 20, though. Um, it's so easy to win the returner award, so David Clark gets that. A good average, very healthy. He did an okay job punt returning, but those are the season stats. Can you move my bottom right corner for face cam? Yeah, I'm going to move that. I'm going to try bottom left and see how that works. We're almost to a thousand people. So, career numbers. So, we're going to be focusing on the seniors here. And everything you see here happened in the series. All these stats. Philip Nelson in three seasons threw 62 touchdowns to 45 interceptions. Are you going to miss Philip Nelson? I want to know, guys, in the comment section, will you miss Philip Nelson? Almost 8,000 career yards here. 144 sacks. That's. I only had like 32 this season. What happened? I'm not sure. All right, running. Roderick Williams started as started for one season. No one's gonna miss Philip Nelson. We got like ninety percent saying no. <laughs> He's a Ryan Leaf, Christian Ponder, two point oh. Uh, anyway, Roderick finishes with forty fourteen hundred yards, ten touchdowns, and everybody else is pretty young. So, um, Andre ran the ball twelve times in this series. Receiving, Andre McDonald in three years with us, he got 160 catches, 2,041 yards, and 11 touchdowns, and he is going to be one of the guys I really miss. He only dropped 11 balls in three years, and Duckett's already at eight. K.J. May didn't play much for us until this season, but he made the most of his opportunities, as 
You guys know this season being the leader in catches. We'll move on to defense. And Devondre Campbell's the guy with the big numbers here. You see the solo tackles, 179, seven sacks. No interceptions, but he was probably our best defensive player for the last two seasons, and now he's graduating. Demarius Travis, five picks. Jack Lynn, amazing season. Theron Cochran had 37 sacks in the series. Going down the list, you see some more statistics here. But nothing else really standing out. You guys know who's graduating, who the standouts are, and we've covered those pretty much. So those are the stats for us in this season and for some of the players in the entire duration of the series. We're at 1,042 now. So we'll jump ahead, and we are going to look at the school records because a few were broken this season. I'm not buying time, by the way. I'm just going through and being diligent. Passing yards in a season, Philip Nelson. And I think he tied... The touchdowns in a season. We're close there. Didn't come close to the passing yards. That would take probably four years as a starter or three fantastic seasons. Um, well, you can see some of the other records here that we've yet to break. Theron Cochran, most sacks in a Minnesota career with 37. Rushing, nothing for us. I think a lot of this is Lawrence Maroney. Uh, these 0305s I think are either Maroney or Barber. Um, team stats, we can break that down for a second. You can see where we were in this, uh, it's really hard to see a ranking. You can look at that right bar and see kind of where we stack up, but it's not a really good way to show it here. Um, yeah, we're not going to even sort that because it would take too much time. But I think we're ready to move on, guys. The coaching carousel and all that good stuff. The off season. Is about to begin. Are you ready in the comments? Are you ready? Play at least one easy game. Um, I think for this year's non-conference schedule, we're going to play UTSA again. And instead of playing a team like NC State, we'll play an easier team. But I still want to have one kind of difficult non-conference game a season. Retire McDonald's number. No more number 12s. I've never retired a number in my series. That's an interesting idea. We're ready. Oh, the coaching carousel. You guys will want to see this probably. I'm not leaving Minnesota, but Frank Beamer has retired. And Dana Holgorson. Holgerson. I don't know. He was fired. They went 5-7. and seven. VT went 10 and 3 and their coach retired. Bobby Petrino, Bud Foster, and Nick Toth are the top candidates to take that job. Unexpected jobs. No teams are offering you a job of this type. Okay. And as you guys know, I'm on a seven year deal here. I'm trying to get eight wins a year and I am safe. But we gotta start winning some bowl games. Want to see the last time we won a bowl game? You guys probably know already. 2004. Is that the Music City Bowl? I think it is. That was against Alabama. A lot has changed since then. You can see all the years that have come and gone. This was our second best season since 2003. Or our best season since 2003. And our best since our last bowl victory. But... Work to do, guys. We're 20 and 20 in three years. I'm ready to move on. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the next part of the offseason. Players leaving. Please, no one unexpectedly transfer. Would really appreciate that. How did you beat Bama? I didn't, but 11 years ago, I guess, Bama wasn't that good. Or whenever that was. Twenty and twenty super average, yeah. We uh, 
half and half. Never know what you're getting in this series. But you know the UTSA dynasty began with two, three, and nine seasons. So this hasn't even been as bad. Um, these dynasties, the way I do them anyway, they take a little bit to kind of get going. And I know people, a lot of people towards the beginning of the series weren't that all high on that. Some were, some weren't, but um, once my players start coming in and the season gets to grow a little bit, um, I think a lot of people are more excited now, and the, the view counts are going up for those, and people are really excited for the series. So I think it's moving in the right direction. Let's go to the Big Ten and check out some stuff. We got some new coaches. Indiana has a new coach. Why were they on the hot seat? They were really good. Oh, wait, that's... They have a new offensive coordinator. Got it. That's all I care about. Kirk Ferentz. Oh, he's just back. Purdue has a new coach. TJ Weist. And Rutgers has Rich Skrosky. Well, look at that record. That's not good. Alrighty, look at some more of the bigger conferences. Oh, Iowa State, new coach. Kansas has Charlie Weiss. Is he still there? Is he there in real life? I forget. How about the American? Tommy Tuberville. Brian Cooks at UCF. I don't know most of these names. Conference USA. Independence. The Mac. Bobby Petrino is still here. I want to see if like a big team ended up getting a new coach. Whoa, Stanford. David Shaw got fired. What happened to David Shaw? And they still got Lane Kiffin at USC. <laughs> oh, man. Everybody seems safe in the SEC for the most part besides... Carry. I'm not sure who that is. Most of you guys know I'm more of an NFL guy than a college guy. But that's all very interesting. Players leaving. This is a big part. Okay. Nobody better be leaving me. Nobody better be transferring. This team is about to go to the next level. We have some work to do, but we are, we're ascending. Come on. All right, two guys are leaving. Garrett Outlaw and Calvin Pope, one of the tailbacks that I was pretty excited about for a while, but I haven't played him. I'm not too worried about him leaving. I've, I'm stacked at running back. We're fine. So this is no big deal. I would have laughed my ass off if Leon Daniels transferred for playing time. I would have I would have left. But you can see all the graduates we have. Losing quite a few players. A lot of important ones. Uh, convince them to stay? Huh? I'd like to keep Outlaw around. Persuasion chance very low. Calvin Pope. I can't promise any of these things to him. I can say he might play in three games. Garrett, he might play in three games. I'm moving on. You understand what I'm going through, coach? I don't know what you're going through. Garrett, talk to me, bud. All right. So we're losing our quarterback. We're losing two running backs. We're losing two wideouts. We're losing a tight end. We're losing a left tackle, a left guard, our center, 
a right tackle. Starting right tackle and right guard. Um, our left end. A middle linebacker who never played. Devondre. Big shoes. Eric Murray. Demarius Travis. Those are the gentlemen who have moved on. I'm not getting Donovan McNabb. That seems like it's impossible. Alrighty, so players have left. And now, transfer requests. Who wants to come to Minnesota? Last year, a left tackle from Iowa transferred to us. I don't need this draft class. I make my own draft classes for the series. I don't need these. Last year, left tackle transferred to us. He was like a 69 overall or so. And he's eligible to play this season. We also have the draft results. We'll go draft first. Was anybody drafted? Who has gone pro on this series? Can you... Can you guys remember? We lost, or no, uh, drafted, I think. Did Danelle Kirkwood get drafted? I know Hage, Hagman did. Um, I forget if anybody else did. Huh? Not even Andre? Oh my god, nobody! Oh my goodness. That is ridiculous. Nobody gets drafted. Our team was good enough to have draft picks. Alabama has like 30. No more TJ Yeldon. We're going to go through the... Auburn, anybody? Greg Robinson, Sammy Coates. Um, I wanted to look in the Big Ten and just see who we're not having to go against anymore. Have I missed any Big Ten teams yet? Laquan Treadwell. Nobody from Indiana. Austin Blythe. Jordan Lomax. Maryland. Couple guys here. Oh, Michigan. Oh, thank you, Amara Darbo, for leaving. Thank you so much. Yes, this team is getting worse. And Devin Funches. Funches was a nightmare to have to worry about at tight end. They just got worse. A few guys from Michigan State. Nebraska, not a lot lose, lost here. How about Northwestern, a team that knocked us off and they had no wins at the time. Ohio State, Adolphus Washington, Noah Spence. I think for the most part they're staying intact. Penn State, I don't think that's a ton lost. Purdue, Frankie Williams is it. Uh, Rutgers, nobody. Hopefully I haven't missed anybody, but chances are I have. As we, nobody from UTSA. And how about Wisconsin? Yes! He's gone! Thank you! I don't want to play against him again. Oh, this is a great day for the Minnesota Dynasty. No more Melvin Gordon. Thank you for going pro. This is great. No more Melvin Gordon. What a great day. And now transfer request. Does anybody want to come to Minnesota this year? Nope. Well then, we'll move on. Next up is... Good old recruiting. 
Now, we've already gotten some pretty good players into our recruiting class, but there's plenty of guys out there still, including a quarterback that we want to get really bad now, Andy McKenzie. He's a St. Paul product. He's an athlete who probably is best suited for quarterback, and we missed out on Tyrone Campbell, who was going to the Iowa Hawkeyes. And we'll see if he's red-shirted this year and what his situation is going to be, what position he plays. Um, but that's going to be a big storyline if we ever play him at quarterback, especially. We'll play him. At, we'll play Iowa every year, though. Recruiting. Here we go. I'm going to show you guys are the top classes so far. 95th, because we don't have a lot of guys right now, only 7. You can see a lot more up here. We'll see if there's anybody, Auburn 77, what do you say about that, Chris the Dog? Um, how about the very top, any Big Ten teams? Michigan on top, they're number 1. Then you got Michigan State, who's very good, o Ohio State, who's always pretty good, Iowa, of course they got Tyrone. Um, Illinois is up there. We'll look at this again once we're done. Let's see. Here we go. Andy McKenzie. The scholarship has been offered. We have a 2,200 point lead on Andy and he has these ratings he is a gem that I found late in the year he's got good speed good throw power accuracy is a little suspect so you know maybe he would be better off with a year of red shirting on the bench before he gets thrown in at quarterback especially because we'll have Mitch Leidner this year who has played pretty well when he's been put in but uh, McKenzie has got the tools Definitely to be a good quarterback for our offense, especially. Um, he fits what we want to do. Run the pistol, run the shotgun, have the mobile quarterback get out of the pocket. So I think we have a pretty safe lead. We're still going to play this conservatively because I'm not risking losing him. And then we have a lot of other players going down here, and we're in first place for probably all these guys. And you can see who we already have. Brian Weaver, defensive tackle. Keith Campbell, corner. Ryan Elliott, corner. Martin Parker, five-star wide receiver. Decent speed. Good route runner. He can jump. There we go. Catching is a little worrisome, though. Maybe we can combine him and Doug Duckett into one receiver. Mark Green, the tight end. Corey Boyd, free safety, who's got good speed. And Maurice Pratt, the speedster at running back. And he is a junior college transfer from Forestdale, Alabama. Blinn College, I don't know. Yeah, we, me and my friends have talked about this before. We think when Sunday Night Football is on, when they're doing their names, you know, Jared Allen, Culinary Academy, Cam Newton should come on and say, Cam Newton. University of Florida, or Cam Newton, Blinn College. Anyway, a little tangent there. You can see what we have left. And we know we're going to put a lot into Mr. Andy McKenzie. Oh, you know what? I should probably use that coach upgrade. Can I use it right now? Is it available to me? We have a lot of points, though. Um, I've been working on the recruiting tree the entire time. See, I see Chris the dog likes that comment. Anyway. You specialize in, all right, five players have been known from the state for a pipeline. Extra off-season. Yeah, we're probably going to go with that one. More points for us.
Harry Kane Sr. is a recruiting mastermind. Alright, so we can still do some scouting. And first I want to kind of assess what we have here on the board. I know I'm going to give a lot to McKenzie. We have 13,000 to use now. Right now, I'm going to shove 4,000 points into McKenzie. I don't want to lose him. And I'm not sure what the demand is going to be, but we're going to play it safe. Is it safe or aggressive? Because you're putting a lot of points into one guy. We have Jonathan Starks here, who is 5'11", 190 at outside linebacker. So he's kind of a tiny guy, but he's got good speed. And honestly, looking at these ratings, he might be better suited for safety. So I might move him if he does come to us. Because the block shedding isn't that great. Um, power moves not that great. Pursuit's good. But this, to me, screams safety. And a pretty good one. Oops, I think I backed out. Whoops. But yes, we want to get Jonathan Starks. For the time being, I'll put 25 on him. And I might change McKenzie's number. It's just my initial value I'm putting there. Max Sanders, we need the O-line help. We definitely do. And can't go wrong with those numbers right there. So I'm already eating up his budget crazy. Putting 2,000 into him right now. Um, Ryan Duncan at middle linebacker. Not a high priority at the moment. James Gray at safety. We have a decent lead. And you can see some of the other guys here. Tom Moss is a guy I wanted to check out because he plays outside linebacker. And he looks decent. Those are pretty good. What's the lead? Not great. We're trying to beat out Stanford. Put a thousand on him for now. Robbie Pierre, who would be a Juco transfer. And he looks to be only 82 speed. See, he could play quarterback as well. His accuracy is better than McKenzie's. His throw power is not as good. He's a little bit slower. Um, what else could he play? Could not play corner. He'd be a quarterback slash receiver. Kind of just the wild card out there. And we have a decent lead, so I'm only going to put like 300 on him for now. Tyrone McDonald. 6'2", 229. He's an athlete with decent speed. And he would most likely play cornerback. See the man in the zone, actually. Ooh, he's got good trucking as well. He could play tailback. Good trucking, good spin, decent juke, good stiff arm, decent break tackle. He's a corner slash running back, really. I'm just going to get good players and I'll find a home for him. We have a lead. So we'll go like 200. Matt Walker is another athlete we have a lead with. And Walker has 92 speed, 83 throw accuracy, but only 80 throw power. So he's left to get a lot better. But he runs good routes, and he can jump. He just can't play defense is all. And he's not really much of a tackle breaker or an ankle breaker. So quarterback slash receiver. And we have a small lead. or That's not small. Who am I kidding? Ronald Wesley, cornerback, 6'2", 180. 
And, you know, just uh, nothing really special here. Just you got to have corners, and he'd be a red-shirted guy. And he's already pretty much here. I'm not going to put any on him. Will Anderson. This is a small lead. And he... Decent speed and okay coverage rate. He's another guy who would most likely be red-shirted if he came here. But we'd have to beat out Stanford. Jared Rollins. Not a high priority. I'm not putting points on him. He's a receiver, but he's he's raw and fast. Catching is terrible. Route running is not that good. Jumping is not that good. But he's fast and tall. So, project. Get five. James Gray. We're working our way back up now. He's got very good speed for a safety, but his coverage ratings aren't really good enough to move him to cornerback, and we could use some safety help anyway. So James Gray, definitely going to put at least 1,000 on him. And Ryan Duncan, it's a race. Us, Arkansas, and Auburn. 6'2", 236, coverage middle linebacker, who's got decent speed. Coverage ratings actually aren't that impressive. And overall, to me, he's just an above-average prospect. The um, thing that stands out to me the most is probably the block shedding. That's pretty good for a linebacker, I think. And, you know, I like to get him, but I don't think he's a high priority. We're going to put 500 there right now. I wonder, can I check my roster right now? Because I'd like to see what we have depth-wise. I can see the depth chart, but I'd like to look at it in roster format. We have Jack Lynn for another year. We still have Ray Dixon, Dan Smith. So we're not super thin at linebacker. We're just losing our best defensive player. Let's see, is the... Anywhere to check the roster. They really should let you. I probably gotta go to the depth chart. So you can kind of see what our depth chart looks like now. Okay. So Leidner is basically like the... Whoops. Wait a minute. Andrew Johnson. Yes, he was a quarterback. I kept thinking of Antonio Johnson. I'm like, that's a safety. Is he actually a good quarterback? Um, here would be the depth chart so far. Martindale would be in line to start. Wolotarski, Clark, Duckett, Parker, obviously. And this is without progression, by the way. So these guys are all going to get better. Thankfully. And now linebackers where it's really important. We have Jack Lynn, Maurice Hudson, Dan Smith, De Niro Laster, Marcus Woods. Um, that guy. Marcus Woods, like I said. Corner, Graves, Parker, Smith. Not much would change. Eric Murray has moved on now. And... Yeah, corner still scares the hell out of me. Uh, safety, we're going to get upgrades from true freshmen, but we'll see what happens with progression and how it all stacks up. So, scouting time really isn't over, is it? I mean... Kind of wanted to just look at what's available at outside linebacker. So I think it's obvious going into next year we got to get some impact players in the in the secondary and fix the offensive line. But I'm assuming most of these guys have gigantic leads, and we're looking at the top guys here. And these are not leads you're probably going to really beat at this point in the season. 
So I think at this point you pretty much gotta stick with what's on your board. We are almost to 1,400 viewers in the live stream. This is awesome. Go back to the board. But yes, now we're going to spread out the rest of the points. Um, trying to get Starks, but he wants. I want him to play safety. We're going to put some more on Sanders. Because Michigan State could give us a good battle here. And I'm going to give him another 1,000 probably. That leaves us with only 295 left. <sighs> Look at low lock percentage. Low lock means easy to get. I'll take a look. But we... Like someone I pointed out earlier, we already have a lot of guys in the 70s. So even if we find a guy, you know, chances are it's not going to be someone who plays right away or whatever. But here's the lower lock percentages. Steven Jones a bust. Ricky Rogers at receiver. Brandon Wilson wants to go to Auburn. So how big are these leads? Well, not very big. I guess I never knew about this lock percentage thing here. How you could just look at that and kind of see guys who are not as far out of range. Let's go corner. Jimmy Miller. Brandon Wilson. I'm just going to take a look at some scouting. Garrett Nichols. He's a hard-hitting 5'9", 166-pounder. I'll take a look. I'll bite. Michael Cole! David Kirkpatrick. Going on down this list. That's a three-star right there. But how big are these leads now? Yeah, I'm not going to overcome those. So maybe we'll scout those last two guys. Don't need receivers that bad, actually. We have um, Clark, Duckett, Wotarski, and now Martin Parker coming in as a true freshman. So let's go to corner, and we'll do a couple more scouts. Brian Wilson. Ooh, that's not too bad. Garrett Nichols. That's not too good. And what's the lead on Mr. Wilson? Who's good all around. I haven't even offered him a scholarship. It would be really hard to get him at this point. So let's go through this again. 4K on McKenzie. Maybe we can handle going down to like... If I lose him, I'm going to feel like an idiot though. I don't think we will. Hopefully we can still get Starks. That might be tough. Hopefully we can get St Sanders too. Uh, Duncan doesn't have many points on him. Gray's got a thousand. Take that five off Rollins. Uh, Walker's got two hundred. McDonald has two hundred. Pierre has three. Moss has a K. Probably just wasted points on Wilson there. We definitely gotta put some on Duncan though. If we're even going to have a chance. I 
They don't appear too high on them. Hopefully we can get Mackenzie though. So Mackenzie, Stark, Sanders, Duncan, Gray. Now last year we got my top three prospects. I think we got all of them. And this year my top three consists of Andy McKenzie, Max Sanders, and Jonathan Stark. These are my top three guys. It's I actually ranked it out this year. I try to be a little bit more organized in my recruiting. These are the top three guys that I want. There's a lot of other guys I'd love to have as well. We'll see how these leads work. Why is everybody saying five-star QB? Go back and scout. One sec. There was apparently a five-star quarterback that you guys wanted me to take a look at. Apparently I missed something. Is this the guy you were talking about? Craig Woods. Whose lead is not that large. Is this who you were talking about? from Pikeville, Pikeville, Kentucky. Hmm. I would have to lump a lot of points into this guy. And that means I would lose out on a lot of others. Just to jump into the race. I wonder why no one has offered that many points. This guy do something bad? No one's even offered him a scholarship. I'll pass. I'll pass on him. I don't want to dump the points into him. I'm making the executive decision to say no. We want Andy. We want Andy. So I think that we have this set up all right. Hopefully we can get our guys. We got some decent players already. Now we got to add to that list. We want McKenzie. He's the number one dude. All right. Here we go. Believe in the points. Believe in the points, guys. It's time to simulate and figure out what happens. <sighs> Advance. Signing day, guys. Here we go. We'll see what happens. Come on. Will we get our top recruits? This is big. This is the future of the dynasty. Here we go. Come on. Minnesota Golden Gophers. Who's coming to Minnesota? Who's coming to Minnesota? Is 
This is going to be a good year. Andy, Jonathan, and everybody else seems to have gone elsewhere. Oh my. We got Mackenzie. But oh my, we did not get very many guys. We'll take a look here. It's a little worrisome right now. Signing day. We missed out on everybody, it seems. But some of these guys haven't... Okay, at least Robbie Pierre hasn't committed. We got Jonathan Starks. One by a thousand, so not much. James Gray. Oh, come on. Will Anderson, barely. Ooh, Ronald Wesley. Wow, what happened there? Matt Walker lost him. Tyrell McDonald also going to Missouri. Tom Moss. Old Miss jumped us. Brian Wilson going to Ohio State. We got Andy McKenzie. Hugely, they didn't even try. Yeah. They didn't even try. You see, I'm, I, I wasn't sure if they would or anything, and I always play it safe with the top recruits. But we had a lot of room to get other players. Max Sanders going to Auburn. Oh, we wouldn't have got him anyway, though. Damn, Auburn went all in. All the chips. Wow. Duncan. Arkansas it is. I had to get my quarterback, though. And we missed out on a lot of other players. Yes, it's... On the outside right now, it looks like a slightly... Probably disappointing recruiting class. Um, not to say we didn't get any good players. Definitely did. Jonathan Starks. Andy McKenzie. Martin Parker. They highlight it. I'll have to do a better job next year with some more important positions. But this is alright. Let's see the classes and the breakdown here. We are 53rd. One five star, two fours, seven threes, three twos, and four ones. We might get some walk ons too. So, as it sits now, here are the top recruiting classes in the nation. Virginia Tech is number one, Alabama number two, then Ohio State, Michigan. Three teams from the Big Ten in the top ten. We are sitting down here, kind of middle of the pack, near 53. I forget we were last year, but I would say last year's class was a little bit more impressive. Check the five-star quarterback. I will, once we get that far. Once we see, I'll see his ratings once we get to the year, actually, is what I'm going to do. But we got McKenzie. That was the big one. We got a couple big ones. Missed some small ones. So we'll advance now to position changes. And I think we'll be making some swaps. We'll see. Uh, there are a few recruits I was definitely going to but we didn't get. So position changes. Maybe we'll balance out some defensive ends and whatnot. This is with no progression, so no one's gotten better yet this year. This is just changing positions for players. Um, let's go to the athletes. We got one, Andy. He's a 78 quarterback, 77 halfback, 77 receiver. And you guys know where he's going to be. Quarterback, Andy McKenzie. Moving on. Berkeley Edwards, Kevin Martindale, Lamar Washington, whom I registered the last second last year. And I'm glad I did. We lost Calvin Pope, and now we're in the need of a power back. Got him. 
Actually, Martindale's better at breaking tackles. But Washington's better at trucking. Berkeley Edwards is also pretty decent. This is with no progression, too, so. Got Maurice Pratt. At wide out. Look at all these guys. Harbison. Duckett. Carter. Parker. Got Jared Rollins. Tight end. Let's see. We have to balance out the old line. Doesn't appear so. D line doesn't appear so either. Dan Smith, Hudson, Dixon, Lynn Smith. Oh, so we did get some walk ons, guys. Um, Andy Bowers. And Daryl Smith are walk-ons who have tried to find a way onto this team. Uh, Jonathan Starks, the outside backer. I have to decide if his home is going to be at corner or safety. Good speed. Awareness is scary. Um... Tackling and hit power is pretty good. Block shitting is not where I really like it. You know, I guess it doesn't hurt to just keep him at linebacker. It doesn't really make a huge difference either way. I have a lot of corners, just not a lot of very good ones yet. Graves is our best. Corey Boyd, free safety. And Ryan Barnes from Milwaukee has transferred to us. But I think that that's all we have to do for position changes. One second. Taking one last look. A.J. Clark. Who is A.J. Clark? 86 speed. Decent trucking. Decent elusiveness. Can't catch. He, if he makes the roster, he'll be definitely red-shirted. These are the running backs here. Parker. Excited to see him play. Got some guys above him on the depth chart, though. I don't think I have to make any more changes. Still kind of weird with the old line, but we'll work on that in the next recruiting class. Dan Smith, Maurice Hudson. I don't want to panic too much now. I keep forgetting that these guys are still going to progress and get better. So I think we're good for now. I didn't see anything else I wanted to do. Training results. We'll see how much better guys got. Hopefully some guys made some significant jumps, especially on defense. Training results, here we go. At quarterback, Mitch Leidner. 86 overall, the speed goes up one. And passing wise, he became a lot more accurate. Nobody really has a nice arm on this team besides maybe uh, Andy McKenzie. But Leidner's alright. At halfback, Martindale gets a little bit faster. Edwards gets a little bit better. Washington. Let's see, significant flyers here. Just, I think we got a good running back stable is all. Fullback. Tyler Hartman's a beast. 
At receiver, Wolotarski continues to turn into a monster, it seems. Duckett got better, obviously. But did anybody, did Duckett get some new hands? Did he get better at catching the football? Plus four. That's significant. He better not be dropping the football as much this year. Better spectacular catch, catching traffic, route running. Not too bad receiving. Kirkpatrick, he'll have an even bigger role in the offense this year, probably. Good to see. Okay, offensive lineman. Please say we have some nice jumps. Alex Mays, not bad there. Isaac Hayes, not terrible. Room to work at center. Lance Jackson, not that great. Overall, the O-line isn't good. It's below where it needs to be. Defensive line, Owen Sauls with Dale. Our defensive tackles are still one of our major strengths. How about the rest of the defense? Dan Smith might get the start again. We still have Maurice Hudson, who hasn't played yet. And we have that guy right there, Leon Daniels. Everybody, Leon got better in the offseason. What did Leon get really good at? He can jump higher now. Sweet. Look at Leon Daniels. 47 overall. Right outside, De Niro Laster and Marcus Woods. We'll see who gets a starting spot there. Corner. Graves goes up six. That's big. That's big. All right, that's that's very nice. At least we have Sam Graves. So we know our number one corner is already better. And he's got very good man and zone, so thank you, Sam Graves. Safety. Not great progression from Antonio Johnson. Andre Gaines was the one who really seemed to struggle a lot, though, so did he make a nice jump? Eh, plus five. Anthony Parks got plus five as well. Hopefully Gaines is better this season. At kicker, Santos was a monster. At punter, Morris is good. So there you have it, guys. There is the progression for this season. We have two guys in the 90s and one's a kicker. You have Jack Lind, Damaris Peppers, Maurice Manning, Mitch Leidner, Sam Graves, John Meyer, Alex Mays, Jamel Harbison. These are our best players on the roster. Still a lot of work to be done. And who's the worst player on the team? Don't forget who it is, Leon Daniels. We have kind of breezed through this offseason so far. Now we're going to go to cut players already. Wasn't Graves a redshirt freshman last year? I don't think so. He played as a... I thought he played as a freshman. Now we got to trim some of the fat off the roster. Only have to cut one guy, because the recruiting class wasn't as big as I thought it would be. Look at that, McKenzie's a beast. But who's it going to be? We only have to cut one guy. Only has to be one. And who is that man going to be? Wow, that's not very good, John. Oh, by the way, I want to say that left tackle progressed. Was it Mike Ryan? Was he the one? I think he was. Just checking. Let's see, Matt Lawrence. 57 speed at left end. 
Defensive tackle. Do is this the day we cut Leon Daniels? Maybe not. We'll see. We are going to cut... Matt Lawrence. He's from Minnesota. But this is just not going to do it. It's not going to cut it. Guys, Leon Daniels has survived another season. I can't believe this is happening. Leon Daniels has made the team again. Last year, last season I should say, this turned into a nightmare because of the Leon Daniels on the team catastrophe. And now he's made the roster again. Wait, where do we, uh... When do we... Is it later we redshirt players? It's later. Because this is just cutting. No, I'm not cutting Wolotarski. We move on. I'm not sure there's much for us to change in custom conferences. I mean, we've made edits already. And I'm not moving to a new conference, obviously. Oh. Advancing. Customize this schedule. Who won national championship? Oh, I forgot to tell you guys. Um, national champions are the Texas A&M Aggies. Johnny Manziel. I really wonder how this season is going to go. We lost a lot of good players, and we missed out on a lot of good players. But, I'm not worried. Went eight and six last year. Custom conferences. I think we're good. There's not really much to do. Now, there might be some other moves that I could make that aren't really important for this series. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not even sure what the moves would be. Let's see. Night games in November, yes. Weekday games? Big Ten Championship game. We can move it, but we're not. Protected rivalry. That's not important right there. One protected rivalry. Wait a minute. You play every team in your division every year, right? And then it's just you alternate the other teams. Because I'm not seeing Minnesota against Michigan, Iowa, Wisconsin, or anything. And those are games you play every year. But that's got to be cross-division. So I'm not too worried then. Ah. Uh. 
So we'll keep it the way it was. We're still going to play all the same teams we usually do in our division. And then we'll see what else changes. Maybe we'll play um, Ohio State this year in the regular season. But yeah, we're not going to do anything with custom conferences. We haven't for the last couple seasons. Nothing else to change. Preseason. Here we go. Move Notre Dame to Big Ten. That actually wouldn't have been a terrible move. But we're moving on. Red shirting, depth charts, all that good stuff. And we are going to do a uh, do the preseason recruiting in this because it's kind of gone by really fast so far. And I've become an even better coach. Here we go. We're going to start out with reg. Actually, we're going to start out with the custom schedules. New Mexico State, Miami University, this is what they give us so far. Open against New Mexico State. There's Miami University. That's Colorado State's in there. So we could change. Oops. We could have UTSA right there. Start out against. Let's see what other other options here. Really anybody. Um, and I I want to play a kind of an easy game to get started. We played at NC State last year. So New Mexico State kind of fits that mold. But we've played them before, so I'm thinking about changing it up. What about a team like uh, Georgia State? Then we could go to Miami of Ohio. But I usually have a somewhat difficult non-conference game as well. So what if we changed UTSA, played a team like Notre Dame, and played UTSA in week two? Would they be available? They would. And I'll play that one at home. What do you guys think of that schedule? Georgia State, UTSA... Then you go into the conference. Then you play Notre Dame on the road. Maybe next year I'll move Notre Dame to the Big Ten. That's a good, uh, tough non-conference game, though. Make Week 8 a buy and put a game in Week 11. Not a bad idea. 11 or 12, really. Georgia State, UTSA, Penn State, Indiana, then Iowa, Purdue, Northwestern. I like this schedule. We always going to finish the season going Wisconsin, Rutgers? So I no longer have buys back to back. And if we wanted to, mm, 
Listen to Chris the Dog, oh, another random team. Did that last year and it was NC State. So will the number game end up being the Notre Dame one then? Because if I just did, Auburn, like last year was Auburn, NC State, UTSA. And I kind of wanted to give us one more easy game. So I have to go Georgia State, UTSA, and this one be random. So it could end up being three easy non-conference games. You guys want to do number? Um, crap. How do I do this? How did I do it last year? How do I go random again? Well, I could just let go and see what happens. We got it going fast here. Hmm. I have no idea what kind of number to do here. I was followed by Leon Daniels on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is not going to be the team. I'm just letting go, and we're going to figure out our process here. Okay. Otherwise, it would have been uh, LeBron. Random with eight teams on the board. Yeah, there's not much here. But we could also make this an open date. Right? Make it open, and then we can play a game in week 12. How did I do it last time? Okay. Then it gave me open. This one... There's a few more. I'm not playing an FCS team, though. I will not play an FCS school in this series. They have some cool logos, though. I will say that. Alright, Chris had texted me earlier about Leon Daniels. Let's see. Random number... Here are the possibilities. We could rematch against Florida. How about that? That'd be pretty fun. There's also number one Texas A&M on here. USC, Notre Dame. And we got these FCS filler teams that I'm not counting. I like the week one idea. Play UTSA middle of the season. So change this one to Akron. We can play UTSA late. We'll see when they're available. Yeah, UTSA. So it looks like we can't play UTSA really later. Oh, we can play them here. Then we could go, like, open here. We play one game before Big Ten play. This is getting so messed up. I would like to play UTSA in one of these games. And I guess they're just not open. UTSA is busy this week these weeks guys Week 1 random where there are like 8000 possibilities then figure out the schedule from there I'm I'm going to do this with a number though I'm not going to do it like this I would have no problem playing Tennessee, though. Um, I'm going to need a number, a random number. 
So here's what I'm going to do. Let's see. Yeah, just pick something. I, I'm with you. Um, random number generator. I'm on random.org. Will you guys just take my word for it if I do this? I want a minimum of 50 and a maximum of 100. Generate. It gave me 56. It gave me 56. Here, one sec. Um, yeah, it, it gave me 56. <laughs> we'll just take my word for it. We'll go 56 from here. Skip FCS teams. Do it on Twitter again. 37 for Cochran's sack record. We could do 37 plus 12 because we could, uh, Cochran sack number and then Andre McDonald's retired 12 would be 59. We'll do that. 56 or 59. We're sticking with 56. Okay, I'm done. One, we're skipping FCS teams. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We're sticking with 56. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 16 left. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. So 6 from the top. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Army. Oh, yeah. That wouldn't have been 59. That would have been 49. 37 plus 12. I don't know why I screwed that up. I had 56 on the mind, and then I was like, 50s. Whatever. So there is your random. Not the greatest results, I'd say. Let's see. Notre Dame isn't available this week. Are they available this week? I still want to play Notre Dame. We're going to play him here. Uh, we're going to move UTSA back to week two. Wait, were they not available for week two either? Come on, UTSA. You're annoying right now. Do I still need another game? Nope, I already have 12. You only get three non-conference games now with uh, all these teams in the Big Ten. So, Notre Dame, late in the year. UTSA is kind of right packed in the middle. And open against Army. An option, def an option offense that's going to be really odd, but we'll see how it goes. That's the schedule this year, guys. We're going to open against the Army. Uh, 
And it's funny because Army weren't they the team that we actually won a bowl game in against with uh, UTSA? Wasn't it Army? I think it was. Let me look it up. UTSA. Um, UTSA Army. Yep. It was the series finale, Liberty Bowl. All right. That's our schedule for this season. So we're going to play one game and then jump right into Big Ten play. Not going to waste any time. Wait, let me just make sure I have the, the road home mix good. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. All right. Playing them at home. Now, red shirting players. We got some decisions to make, and Andy McKenzie, who is going to play quarterback for us this season? I, as head coach, general manager, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, lead scout, recruiting assistant, defensive coach of the year, um, quarterbacks coach, select Mitch Leidner as the day one starting quarterback, and we are going to redshirt Andy McKenzie, and that's the plan. I mean, we could start Andy now, but that's, that's a year of development lost, and we're not constrained by the next game coming out or anything, so Leidner has played well. Not as fast as I would like, but I've played with him, and we've done well. And he's got that accuracy. Andy could use some time to develop. He'll be ready next year, hopefully. We're going to play Mitch Leidner. And Andy better not go anywhere. I could always take the red shirt off him, too, but that's not the plan. A.J. Clark's going to get red shirted, but Maurice Pratt... He's a Juco transfer as a sophomore. And these are the guys we currently have. Martindale's the redshirt sophomore, a couple redshirt juniors. But Maurice Pratt is a true sophomore, and he's fast. So, might want to redshirt him. At wide receiver. Here you see our list of guys. And the decision has to be made on Martin Parker. Um, we're going to keep David Clark active. Put Pratt on kick return, punt return. That's why I might keep him active. Because he would get us a spark there. He'd be fourth running back. We obviously already have a good returner in Clark. But Martin Parker, I kind of want to play him. I mean, our 1-2-3 punch could be Wolotarski, Duckett, Clark. Or Wolotarski, Duckett, Parker, Clark. I don't know. I mean, his catching is not fantastic. We don't need to play him yet. But you're always got to be worried about a five-star athlete who gets redshirted leaving, I guess. I don't want to do a neutral sighter this year. I'm going to keep uh, six home games. Well, unless we wanted to move the Notre Dame game. I'll look into that one maybe as a neutral site. I want to play it in like the Arctic Circle and play it in ice. Um, we'll come back to that position group. We'll redshirt Mark Green, sophomore tight end, who was a uh, Juco transfer guy. The offensive line. Well, we'll just redshirt John Hunter. Defensive line. Will Thompson gets redshirted. 
Um, we're going to redshirt Brian Weaver. What about Alexander? I mean, we got some extra D linemen, and I want to play Jerry Jackson more. So I could probably get away with redshirting both of these guys. Left outside linebacker. We got Dixon and Smith. On, uh, in the middle, Leon Bowers will get red-shirted. Daryl Smith will get red-shirted. Wow, that makes Leon Daniels second middle linebacker for the time being, but I'll, I'll put somebody else above him on the depth chart, don't worry. <laughs> right outside, Jonathan Starks. Let's see. The awareness kind of worries me. What is his play reaction time? Pursuit's good. Play reaction is not that bad. Play at MetLife? That's a good idea. So, red shirting Starks. We have Dan Smith, Maurice Hudson, Ray Dixon. I think we're going to red shirt Jonathan Starks. At corner? Bottom two guys here. Everybody else stays the same. At safety, we'll redshirt Corey Boyd. At strong safety, we'll redshirt Ryan Barnes. So I'll go back through and see if I missed anybody I want to redshirt. Maurice Pratt. That speed is ridiculously good. Martindale, Washington, Edwards. Yeah, that carrying is worrisome. I think we're going to redshirt little Pratt here. Because next year we'll have two seniors. And I don't want to go into next year with two seniors, two juniors, and a sophomore. Who's not that good. AJ Clark. So, I'm okay with that. At receiver, I heard Mel Kuyper has Leon Daniels at the top of his draft board. <laughs> oh man, Parker. I think he could use some time to develop the hands. I mean, we're going to play Wolitarski. We're going to play Duckett. i got to figure out who's going to play on the outside. Who's going to play in the slot. Duckett is 6'2". His acceleration is fantastic. Who has the best route running? They're all pretty good. Duckett's the second best. But Martin Parker. See, if we do play him, we still got youth on our side. Clark would turn into a junior next year. Parker would be a sophomore. Hmm. I think we're going to play Parker. I kind of want to play him. But is it worth it as like a number four receiver? We don't really know much about Jamel Harbison or Eric Carter, but we didn't know much about KJ May either. So maybe I will slap the red shirt on him. That takes away some speed though. Martindale's our fastest guy that's going to play. Pratt was red shirted. Um... Rollins is red shirted. He's raw. Parker. Play Leon instead of Parker. What a good decision. I mean, you play Parker this year. He doesn't play. He doesn't start yet. And that loses a year of eligibility. When next year. We'll have another guy graduating. Then next year you go Wolitarski as a senior. If he doesn't go pro. Then you got Duckett. Yeah, Parker as a redshirt freshman, probably an 80-81 overall. 
I think we got to invest and redshirt him. Then you still got David Clark. Wesley McCutcheon's down there, too. Don't forget about old Wesley, 6'5". It'll be a very interesting season. I gotta do a much better job recruiting this year. Hopefully guys can just make plays on defense and our offense retains uh, what made us good last year. Did you get that athletic prospect or did he go to Iowa? Tyrone Campbell ended up going to Iowa. All right. So Leidner is good there. We got Pratt and Clark getting red shirted. So Martindale is going to be a starter. But when we go to our diamond package, he's going to stay in the same spot. And then Lamar Washington will be the deep back in that formation, probably. He or Edwards, it'll depend on who plays better and who breaks more tackles, really. And then, I think I got my red shirting all squared away. I hate to red shirt both, all, like, Starks, Parker, and Pratt, but I think that, for the future, it'll pay off. Let's go depth chart. Leidner, Streveler, and Johnson. At halfback, Martindale, followed by... Let's see, who's got better carrying? Ah, I mean, Washington could be pretty good. Carrying's not as good. Washington could be pretty good. Hopefully Martindale stays healthy. We are going to check, check out guys like Tyrone Campbell and whatnot. Let's see it. Wide out. Wolitarski number one. Is Duckett ready for the slot? That means Harbison will play outside. It looks like. Then Duckett and Clark over Carter. Just because I know Clark. I think this is all will go right away. At tight end, Kirkpatrick, Williams, and Tyler Hartman. Left tackle is Alex Mays. Left guard is Isaac Hayes. Hey, we're rhyming so far. And Franklin White ruins the rhyming trend. Right guard, Lance Jackson. Right tackle, Jonah Persig. 6'9", that's a big human being. At left end, Owen Sauls Waddell. We've seen a little bit of him. Then we got Matt, Hander Ma Matt Henderson. Jerry Jackson there. At defensive tackle, we're going to make the fourth guy Jerry Jackson. He's a guy I invested a lot into to get, and we haven't really used him much. But luckily we have some good defensive tackles right there. Left outside linebacker. So our linebacker core this year, we have Jack Lynn. We have to pick between Maurice Hudson, Marcus Woods, Dan Smith, and Ray Dixon for the final two spots. So Maurice Hudson. And most importantly, is going to be this, um, this right spot. Probably. That's where Campbell played. And Laster. What do you got to offer? What's, uh... 
He's an 80, or he's a 78. Dan Smith. Need a guy who can react fast, make plays in the backfield. And awareness is a bit of an issue. So we are going to roll Lynn in the middle. That's not changing. Left outside. Where did Ray Dixon even go? We're going to give Ray Dixon a chance to take over for Devondre Campbell. He had a decent year. And he'll be backed up by Laster and Woods. The other side, we're going to try out Maurice Hudson. And behind him is going to be Dan Smith. Actually, I might play Smith in front of him. We'll see how things go. Based on play, things could change. Let Leon play work. <laughs> He's going to play special teams probably still. Middle linebacker. Don't have much here. You guys know who's all the way down there. At corner, Sam Graves, Eric Parker, and Matt Smith. Let's see who's better suited for that nickel roll. Well, Paul Patrick might deserve some playing time too without awareness. What are his ratings? Ooh. We'll give Smith a shot. But at least we got Graves, who's looking pretty good. Free safety will be Antonio Johnson. Backed up by... Probably Matt Smith. I go Marcus Woods is all the way up here, too. 12 awareness. Hopefully that's just his awareness at safety. Wow. Yeah, see? His awareness changes based on position. Strong safety. Andre gains for now. But that could definitely change. Because I'm looking for some improvement at safety. Kick returner. That is still going to be Clark. Along with Carter. Why not? Punt returner will be David Clark. Alright, so this is looking pretty good right now. Once again, going back through, Leidner, Martindale, Hartman, Watarski and Harbison, Adam Kirkpatrick, Alex Mays, Isaac Hayes, Franklin White. Offensive line's got to get better, that right side. Uh, we're strong in the middle of the defense at both linebacker and our defensive tackles. We have a good number one corner. We'll see how these guys play. Can Leidner get the job done? We will do um, equipment and stuff too. We're almost two hours into the stream. But yeah, I think recruiting has been a little bit uh, worse than I thought it would be. I want to see if I can make uh, that Notre Dame game late in the year in MetLife, and I hope to... I hope it snows so hard. Let's see, what do they call it? Let's see, where's MetLife? MetLife, MetLife. Lincoln Financial would work too, probably. But I'm looking for MetLife. Cowboys, Georgia Dome, MetLife Stadium against Notre Dame, and I hope it snows. Army. Gotta get our revenge against UTSA.
MetLife Stadium.